What do you want to be when you're older? Hold on, this is like a deep question. Uh... When I'm older, I want to be a singer. That's, that's my goal. I'm not sure I want to invent the supercomputer, but I definitely want to build the supercomputer. I want to be an inspiration. An organizer of, of like, do-gooders. I want to be a veterinarian. I want to help out animals and work with them. I want to be a media mogul. Just rule the world. When I'm older, I want to be anything but the one that doesn't fit in, the one that people don't love. Everyone deserves a dream. Everyone. But some of us are depressed. Anxious. Scared. Angry. Alone. Don't feel like ourselves. We can't even focus on the present, much less the future. If that's you, say something. It's okay to talk. It's okay to share. It's okay to get help or help someone. Talk to someone. It, it helps. And people, people will listen. Add your voice at oktotalk.org. Oktotalk.org. Brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters. So you take the mouse and click over there, and then you can choose someone you want to call. Um, my niece. I click here? Uh-huh. This is Louisa. Recently she got help going online to chat with her family back home. Okay, so then you want to hit that green button. This is her first time on the internet, and her first time seeing her niece in five years. Louisa doesn't know what to expect. Ah, uh, Louisa? Oh, oh my gosh, there she is. This is amazing. <laughs> it's so good to see you. <laughs> you look so pretty. But this is definitely way beyond. Oh my gosh. <laughs> see what the internet can help you do at everyoneon.org or call 1-855-387-9166 to find a free training class near you. That's 1-855-387-9166. <laughs> oh, I've missed you. Oh, me too. Brought to you by Connect to Compete and the Ad Council. Talk 1470, WWNN, Pompano Beach, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. For almost 10 years, I've been a lineman for the power company. It's hard work up here on the wires, long, dangerous hours, and at times like this, when storms roll through, I really appreciate how much people rely on me. I know that service is important. That's why I also serve in the Coast Guard Reserve. In the Coast Guard Reserve, our crews respond to rising floodwaters in the Midwest, oil spills in the Gulf of Mexico, and disasters like the Haiti earthquake. The Coast Guard Reserve is a challenge I gladly take on because my country needs me. It has a lot in common with my full-time career, and just like other first responders, firemen, police officers, and EMTs, we do our best work when things are their worst. I have no doubt I was born for this. If you were born ready to give more to your country, the Coast Guard Reserve is ready for you. Learn more at GoCoastGuard.com. Sponsored by the United States Coast Guard in cooperation with the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. AM 1470 WNN. Listen live at WWNNRadio.com and like us on Facebook. Search AM 1470 WNN. Are you saving for college? 529 college savings plans are offered by states to provide easy and affordable ways to save. Saving in advance is a key part of preparing for higher education and avoiding high student loan debt. National studies show that students with savings are much more likely to attend and graduate from college than students with no savings. For more information on how you can get started, visit collegesavings.org. This is Talk 1470. Talk 1470. WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to The Gift of Life with Greg. I'm your host, Greg Francis, and I'm joined today by my co-host, Barry Kaplan. We save lives plain and simple. Have you known someone stricken with leukemia? Has a family member of yours suffered from lymphoma? Then turn up your dial. This show is for you. We are the gift providing a second life. We are the gift of life. Since 1999, we've saved over 2,700 lives. For many patients with blood cancer, bone marrow donation is often their last hope, and that's where we come in. We try hard at what we do, but we will never be satisfied until we can say one day we found a match anytime, anywhere, for anyone. That's the gift of life way. So now we have the scissors, we've opened the box, 
And now it's time to unwrap the gift of life. Hello, everyone, and a happy June 9th, 2015. <clears throat> Welcome to our show. We took a hiatus last week, but now we're back and better than ever. Uh, they're showing me on the screen uh, built up. Wow. Uh, I hope everyone had a wonderful week. And... Welcome to the beginning of the Women's Soccer World Cup. And I thought the United States, they played very, very mediocre last night. But they got great play, especially in the beginning of the game by Hope Solo. And despite her off-field transgressions between the, uh, between the lines on the pitch, she's, she's mean. And uh, really saved some point-blank shots. I cannot say enough about the drib dribbling of uh, Megan Rapinoe. And Megan, the way that you played, I sure as heck hope that I didn't butcher your name. You were doing magic on the on the ball uh, on the pitch with the ball and put two balls in. One of them was a deflection, and the other one she went about 30, 40 yards. So I had so much fun with the men's World Cup last year that this year we're hoping that the women bring it home. As you remember, in two thousand eleven, they really the last couple of minutes. I don't want to say they choked, but they choked. So uh, we're rooting for the uh, women's team. They're playing on Friday, so. Stars and stripes, let's, uh, let's really bond together and hope that the women take it home in Canada. Last week's show, two weeks ago show, last week we were off. We discussed the need for help, and we really need it now more than ever. We introduced what's called Pay It Forward, in which we're asking individuals to contribute $10 per month, 33 cents a day, to help save lives. As we discussed numerous times over 40 plus weeks here, yet I, I can't ever say this ne uh, enough, ne never enough. Seven year old Sammy of South Florida and 14 year old Lewis of Boca Raton are desperately trying to find a bone marrow or peripheral blood stem cell donor in order to live. If you're lucky enough that your own children, your own grandchildren, loved ones are healthy, Please find it within you to pay it forward. Only 33 cents per day. Fred, we'll skip a cup of coffee, right? Uh, of course, yeah. And, and it goes a long way towards saving a life. I, I joined the pay it forward. If you're interested, please join me by calling Anita at 1-800-9-MARROW. I've seen parents fainting. I've seen parents going through stress. No young child signs up to have cancer. Let's see if we can make a difference. What has been a constant theme of this show? It's that we have too many underrepresented ethnicities, not only in Gift of Life, but in bone marrow donors worldwide. Pacific Islanders are having a really tough time. That's why we're looking to get a representative in Hawaii. Hispanic people are underrepresented. We've made accommodations to go into Hispanic neighborhoods, get ready, willing, and able donors to help our, our Hispanic friends. The same with our Asian friends, our African American friends, our Haitian American friends. Minority patients are suffering the consequences of people not swabbing. Patients suffering from these minority ethnicities will find a match less than 50% of the time. What that means is that they will die. And there's no need. We just have to get the word out. If you're interested in joining the registry, if you're interested in running a drive, if you're interested in getting involved, if you don't know how, that's not a problem anymore. Please call Corey at 1-800-9-MARROW to get information on how you can get involved, make a difference, save a life. As previously mentioned, thanks to you, our supporters, Gift of Life supporters, our show is now syndicated in six cities. More awareness, more people swabbing, more contributions, and the culmination of all of our help will equal more lives being saved. In 2014 alone, Gift of Life was responsible for saving 130 lives. This year in 2015, our total will evolve past 3,000. 3,000 lives, 3,000 families being saved. Congratulations, team, at 800 Yamato Road. Congratulations to our listeners. Without our collective efforts, none of this would have been made possible. As we, start, as we started anew in 2015, I can't believe it's almost mid, the midway point. I want to touch upon Arlene Feinberg, the matriarch of Gift of Life, 
who unfortunately passed away in January of 2014. Arlene had a vision while she was searching for her son Jay. Her vision was to find a match anytime, anywhere for anyone that is suffering from blood cancer. And while Jay was going through his journey to find a match, many, many people were saved as a result of matches for Jay and Arlene was just as happy. Unfortunately, as mentioned, Arlene passed away in January of 2014, but she had a legacy when she was alive, which was to find a match for anywhere, any, anyone at any time. And in 2015, our mantra is to make Arlene's vision Arlene's reality. For those people who are tuning in for the first time, you're joining us at the end of the season, but it's not too late. I'm Greg Francis, and welcome to Gift of Life with Greg and Marty. Welcome to our show. We encourage all of our listeners, any of our listeners, if you just want to say hello, please call us anytime at one 565 1470 Again, that's one 565 1470 We broadcast live from Boca Raton, where it's now overcast, uh, hovering around 90 degrees. We're here every Tuesday evening from 4 to 5 p.m. here on our flagship station, WWNN 1470. I really look big in this uh, camera here. <laughs> We're here to spread awareness about the Gift of Life Bone Marrow Foundation, a life-saving nonprofit that gives patients, like mentioned before, our seven-year-old friend Sammy, who is battling Fanconi anemia, a second chance at life. She's certainly in our prayers. We want to remind everyone of how special life is, and how every day of health and happiness, remember this, is a true gift of life. Please take stock of what I'm saying. Over the past years, there have been plenty of eye-openers, some, some tragic, some extremely rewarding, but one constant staple. Every day of health and happiness is a true gift of life. Before I go any further, I want to thank my own gifts of life, people who make me smile every day and really remind me of how lucky I am. To undoubtedly my biggest fan, my mom, Katie, who's uh, listening, I, I believe, somewhere in Florida. Uh, thank you, Mom. I love you. To my biggest Maryland fans, hello and thank you, Grandma Margie. And, uh, and it, she's outside of Baltimore. Her school is winding down. They start a little later, end a little later. And Billy Beagle, the chairman of our board, who could represent us in five countries, 12 cities, and a few towns all within a week. And he's been doing this for over two decades. So, Billy, uh, continue to fight the good fight. And thank you so much. I'll be seeing you on Thursday. And to my two boys, uh, Patrick, who is eight. I'm very proud of Patrick. He made the superintendent's honor roll, graduating uh, from second grade. And Nicholas, who is 12, and as a boastful, proud father, got A's in every one of his classes this year. Not, not one B. He got straight A's for four straight quarters. So, Nick, uh, job well done, and uh, I love you, boys. To my right, and, and this is the first time she's to my right, normally I'm smiling across the table, but Marty stewards all the walks that we have, which include Boca, New York, New Jersey, the capital region of Maryland, D.C., Virginia, Massachusetts, Chicago is joining the arsenal soon. She brings a wealth of experience for Gift of Life uh, with community relations and engagement. Uh, is involved in sponsorships, opportunities for walks. Uh, she's involved with the gala, social media, and and really puts our uh, name on the map in South Florida. So I'm going to turn it over to my friend Marty, and I'm going to ask how could people get involved with the walks coming up with the gala, with other events that are going on? Well, first, Greg, I don't think you look large in the screen. Oh, well, thank you. Maybe... Uh, it, it, it is a close-up. Uh, I, don't, I don't look a day over 29. <laughs> <laughs> there are many ways people can get involved in Gift of Life. Uh, the first way, which I think is probably best, is check out our website, giftoflife.org. And from there, you'll be able to see all the walks we have coming up. Right now, we have three scheduled in October. And uh, our one right here in Boca will be in January. Uh, and this week on Thursday, the gala is coming up in New York. The gala is the Partners for Life gala where three transplant recipients will be meeting their donors for the very first time. We are so excited for the event. Uh, the MC will be Ethan Zahn, winner of Survivor. 
Uh, I was thinking which survivor, but I'm not quite sure off the top of my head. But, but he, he survived. Won. He survived in <laughs> one. And he also survived a bone marrow transplant from his brother. And An avid soccer player also. Avid soccer player, jack of all trades. Master and, of all. And um, for the gala, you'll actually be able to watch it live via Ustream. So we encourage you to tune in. Uh, if you go to gala.giftoflife.org, you'll be able to get the link. We'll also post it on our social media. We always encourage you to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, snap a picture with us on Instagram. Lots of ways to get involved. So um, we're very excited for those events. And then also coming up in August, right here in Boca, is the Campus Ambassador Seminar, where we'll be having students from different colleges across the country. I know we're aiming for one ambassador in every state. We'll, we'll be fighting blood cancer all across the country. And those students will be here mid-August and uh, learning all about Gift of Life, how they can help further our mission, um, educate and swab their peers, as well as run fundraisers on their college campuses. So it's gonna be great. And finally, next month, Gift of Life will be hosting its bowling tournament strikes for life i believe is that yes it's that's sunday july 26th thank you freddie there you go <laughs> and where will it be held it is going to be held at um strikes here in boca and um if you want to find out more information give us a call at uh 561-982-2900 uh ask for corey or myself and uh we are going to try and pre-register this tournament's going to be handicapped so um, if you are an avid bowler and um, you're not a scratch player but you're a handicap player, please come out um, and support our tournament and also maybe win some prizes. Yeah, I saw you have cash prizes. Yes, it, it's very interesting. And, you know, it will make it easier for you. If you want to call up and register for the event, it's 1-800-9-MARROW, toll free. We, we ran two events uh, so far. The first one, we had roughly 50 bowlers. The second one w was encroaching around 100. But some people came up to Freddie and myself and said, you want to know something? We're handicapped bowlers, which means that it, it levels the playing field because they get more pins if they have a sanctioned average. So you can't make up a number out of the air. It shows that they're in the United States Bowling Congress and they are bowlers in a league. So what it does is it levels the playing field. We're hoping to have between 150 and uh, 200 bowlers. First prize is $1,500. Second prize is $750. Third prize is $500. Fourth prize is $250. And one out of every 10 bowlers will get their entry fee back. But more important than the cash prizes, the pro all the proceeds that day will go towards testing kits. And we certainly need to save lives. So if you're interested and you enjoy bowling, uh, you know that you're coming out to a good cause, so you can't lose. Again, if you're interested, call up Corey or Frederick at 1-800-9-MARROW. Let me throw something over to my friend Marty. What's going on with World Marrow Donor Day? Uh, one thing with the bowling tournament, with the cash prizes, I heard that some people donated back their cash prizes last time. Uh, the, the first the first tournament, yes, uh, over 70% of the prizes were donated back. That's so nice. On uh, the second tournament, everybody that won get, uh, kept their prize. No so, judgment. No, no <laughs> judgment. We're not... <laughs> Honestly, if you win, it's a tournament. I'm not expecting anybody to give back their prize uh, for the first tournament they chose to. It's not, not subliminal. If somebody wins out of 150 people, by all means, it's their money. They pay their entry fee. For those that did give uh, a lot of their proceeds back the first um, in the first tournament, it went to a very worthy cause, and it allowed us to uh, test more people. And this is for really professional bowlers, this tournament? No, actually... I'm more of a bumper bowler. Actually, it's this one is more for the bumper bowler. Uh, really? Maybe not the bumper bowler, but not really. It caters towards the average bowler that maybe is in a fun recreational league. The first two, uh, two tournaments, excuse me, Marty, cater to those that are high-level bowlers. For example, the in the four-game uh, preliminaries, the scratch score of a thousand let you advance. That means that you had to average about 250 a game. 
Now, if you're somebody in the, that's in a 180 bowler and you average, you know, 210, 220, you have a good chance of advancing. So it definitely like makes the, the uh, definitely makes the the cast wider. Maybe you I should have a have first to, and worst. We have to start practicing, Marty. I think you should have a first and worst. <laughs> I might be in the running for the worst. <laughs> you you want to know something? That's not a bad idea to have a, a prize for the worst as well. But but the worst best because, again, there, there's no worse in the day when you're trying to help people uh, try to help save lives. So uh, with, that, with that being said... World Marrow Donor Day. Another day where we're going to be striking out cancer, September 19th. Participating registries from around the world will be... Particip will be obviously participating and by participating registries I mean those that are part of the World Marrow Donor Association which is the conglomerate of I believe 71 registries Greg is that correct 72 but you're 72. right there okay close so 72 registries are part of the World Marrow Donor Association including gift of life and all of those registries work together to facilitate transplants for patients internationally so one thing that people should know is that by joining Gift of Life's registry, they can actually be called as a match for any patient patient searching around the world. So we facilitate many international transplants with different countries. Um, the way that those transplants work, people often ask, the donor will um, give either bone marrow or peripheral blood stem cells at a collection center here in the United States, and then their cells are flown to wherever their recipient may be. Um, they're couriered in it looks like a little cooler yeah and goes on the plane looks like a Coleman cooler yeah <laughs> and uh, it probably is yeah and um, then the cells are brought directly to the patient so it's pretty interesting and um, again we've had a lot of international transplants um, one of those transplants is actually going to be involved in our gala an international recipient with a donor here in the United States so World Marrow Donor Day Gift of Life is participating um, September 19th, if anyone listening is interested in running a drive or event on that day, Saturday, September 19th, please give our office a call. We would love to be running a drive in every state on that day. Um, so, yeah, that's mm -hmm. definitely our goal. And, and we would be remiss on the show if we didn't give congratulations to the founder uh, of this fine organization, Jay Feinberg, on his 20th year yeah. transplant anniversary. So it's been 20 years since Jay had his uh, transplant in 1995, and since then he has done tremendous things for for the world and people kind. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, what Jay's done for Gift of Life is really amazing. He really chose to dedicate his life to saving others after receiving his own life-saving transplant. And I know his donor Becky will be at the gala, so it's going to be a really great evening. Uh, it's going to be great. We're going to be there. Uh, Thursday and uh, the event and I, th I think we're both heading back Friday going to take care of some business see some of our New York friends but it's going to be anyone can be there Greg you stream you stream that's true if you can't be there be there right be there be there okay so so with that being said it can't radio cannot get better than this except for Valerie's news but you know what you have to wait to hear from our commercial sponsors We'll be back in a few with the, the high point of our show, although I don't know if it could get better than this, Valerie's News. We'll see you in a few. Throwitbetter.com Do you need help with your bowling game? Are you taking the right five-step approach? If you want to become a competitive bowler, even a recreational bowler that's considering joining a league or a league bowler that is considering joining a tournament, you need to see Vince. He's going to show you how to throw it better. He'll get you the right equipment. He'll show you the right approach, and as a certified coach, he'll put you in the best position to succeed. If you're interested, please contact Vince at throwitbetter at gmail.com and tell him that Greg sent you. Again, that's throwitbetter at gmail.com or call Vince at 954-541-5414. We want to extend a special thanks to our friends at the Boca West Foundation for all the wonderful work they do for Gift of Life and for all the meaningful service they give to the Boca Raton community. For over three years, the Boca West Foundation has generously supported local charities in the Boca Raton area. The Boca West Foundation, it's all about the kids.
Are you in the market for a health plan? If so, please visit my good friend Gary at Health Plans Unlimited. No plan is too big or too small. Gary will customize a plan that's affordable and comprehensive just for you. If you're interested, please visit Gary Goldman, the best in the biz, at www.healthplansunlimited.com. Again, that's www.healthplansunlimited.com. Or you can call Gary Goldman directly on his personal line at 954-303-6676. Again, that's 954 954- 303-6676 and tell him that Greg sent you directly from the gift of life. Health Plans Unlimited. We have the health plan for you. Welcome back to the gift of life with Greg, the show that talks about giving and receiving. If you'd like to call into our show, we'd love to hear from you. Please call 888-565-1470. Again, that's 888-565-1470. 1470. And now back to our show. Hello. Welcome back to the gift of life. We're just having too much fun on the set. Welcome. It's uh, Tuesday, June the 9th, 2015. And we, we have a lot of events, as Morty mentioned in the first segment, that is going on. In fact, we have a caller that, that came in. We put it on hold because there's a important message that everybody listens to who tune in on a weekly basis and I've been getting a lot of tweets because uh, as we mentioned last week we took the week off so people want to know what's happening in pop culture who better to ask than Miss Valerie Hernandez so Valerie what's in Valerie's news this week thank you Greg um well starting off with uh, Kim Kardashian who got some serious wife points yesterday for renting out the Staples Center for Kanye's birthday um, a lot of celebrities showed up to play basketball with Kanye, including Justin Bieber, Magic Johnson, Carmelo Anthony, Shaq, Kobe Bryant, um, Scottie Pippen. I mean, all the big timers were there. How much did it cost to rent out? Actually, I was listening to um, some reports, and it was only about a hundred thousand, which kind of you know baffles me. I would have thought it was you know a lot more considering. You know, the Lakers play there, and it's, you know... It's, and the Clips. They had, you know, the Lakers dancers. They had a bunch, and it was, I mean, 100,000 doesn't seem like a lot, but I guess when you're Kim Kardashian, you know, yeah, but who doesn't else is matter. It? That's true. Very true. Second up, um, Teresa Gudici is almost uh, halfway done with her 15-month prison sentence, um, but she's working to repay her debt to the federal government. She has, uh, the Real Housewives of New Jersey star has agreed to give up her Maserati and 50% of her money uh, earned uh, from renting her, you know, New Jersey property. And she has also had to give up, you know, her earnings from her Bravo TV series. So, um, that's, that's part of restitution or she just wants to make good? No, it's, it's part of, you know, giving back what she took so i'm sure she'll have another bravo reality tv show I, yeah they were talking about her having a show from prison which i didn't know oh. how mm-hmm. that was allowed but you know Real housewives in prison. <laughs> yeah. she's uh, she's apparently teaching fitness classes in prison too i heard like oh. aerobics and zumba so all right interesting productive yeah very and last but not least, um, something that I thought was very interesting, a new study may have just given you another reason to hate time and your mortality. Uh, Columbia University scienti- uh, scientists compiled birthdays and medical records of patients um, and realized that people born in the spring are usually the healthiest and live the longest. Uh, people born in the month of January, February, and March um, suffer are, are prone more to heart disease. Uh, people born in you know October, November, and December are more prone to respiratory disease, and uh, summer months are usually prone to asthma. So, I thought that was pretty interesting. So basically, so. bad no matter what. <laughs> yeah. Have your babies in May. Oh, that is the <laughs> the end. May babies. May babies. What are you? Spring babies. I'm I'm born in February. Yeah, you? I'm in March, so. 
September. With no good planning. I'm uh, asthma October. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I was born in uh, September, and I did have asthma growing up. So spring babies are the healthiest babies, FYI. All right. So um, you see, plan accordingly. That's <laughs> 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 a, 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 a public service announcement from Gift of Life with Greg and Morty. So, all right, Valerie, anything else in... Uh, that is all for today. All right, thank you. I, I learned so much. I have to admit I've dropped out of pop culture a little bit, so that's why I love your segment. And Valerie doesn't tell me offline what it is. So I, like you, have to, have to listen to this segment. Uh, today's topic. Every year uh, I try to reflect at a certain point and recalibrate and say does anything make more sense or less sense and at certain points in my life it was less and certain points more but but subject to debate and I, I wrote down 14 points that uh, with our panel here that I didn't you know introduce formally Marty my, my partner in crime uh, Valerie my wife at work and Frederick uh, is also my partner in crime we all work for gift of life and we're all here to help save lives and with that, uh, we, we've been doing this show now for about a year, and we're going to take a, a two-month hiatus after next week, and we're going to come back for season two, uh, bigger and better than ever. But what I've learned in the past year is, number one, it's been, it reaffirms my, my, uh, my belief in, in humankind, is that many people care. People will help people in need, some for very altruistic reasons, other it could be moral obligations others because they believe in quid pro quo that if they help someone and good fortunes will come back and help them uh, if they're in need one interesting case this year that really stuck out to me occurred when a young lady was willing to die she signed waiver papers to help someone it happened to be a young child in need and with this young lady, it posed terrible compl complicated potential complications. Excuse me, to herself if she moved forward with the donation. And ethically, morally, and every otherly, we could not allow her to donate because it was going to put her in uh, you know tremendous harm's way. The uh, the good luck of this story is that the patient found another donor and is doing extremely extremely well. But what's your take on it? Marty's been here a little bit uh, longer than, than Valerie and Fred, but from your experience in your first year with Gift of Life, do you see that to be a common theme? Um, yeah, I, I guess. Um, I've only been here nine months, um, almost almost a year. And um, I guess, yeah, it's almost a year coming up in September. And um, yeah, I guess that that is a, a common theme. I don't know if Val's been here long enough. No, but the, the reason why I, I focus with you on Freddie, uh, on this one, Fred, is because you've been a day collection coordinator, so you actually have spent time with the donors that ha have graciously agreed to help somebody in need. Yeah, and, um, you know, it's, it's always interesting to meet those type of people, um, and I always ask them the question, you know, why are you doing this? And, um, you know, I always get similar answers, but the, I guess, to paraphrase all of them, it's, you know, why wouldn't I do this? You know, if I have this opportunity to help somebody in need, you know, hopefully one day, if I'm ever in this situation, somebody would do the same thing for me. So Th that's um, one of the, that's one of the points that were made. So let's move on to number two, what I've learned this year. Most people, if afforded the opportunity, would love to meet either the person whose life they saved or the person who saved their life. Valerie, I'll go to you. If you were in that situation, would you want to meet the individual? Probably not. Fred? If I was the recipient, you mean? Or, or, or the donor. If, or the donor. Um, I, I would like to meet the person. Uh, uh, Marty? Well, having actually gone through this? Yes. 100% would want to meet the oh, wanted to and have met the person. And I, I guess it's fair fodder because I have to get. I, I would probably not. Um, if you were the donor or the recipient, uh, either, either. If, if I were the donor, I, I normally, funny enough, talking on a, on a radio show, um, I like to keep an anonymity, and all I would hope for for the the patient is that they live a fruitful life, 
and enjoy their life and, and have the utmost in health. Um, with that being said, if I was the donor, I, I don't uh, think that I, I would. I kind of find a purity in, in not knowing who that person is. However, I'm in the grave minority on this one. Out of the people that we surveyed, roughly 98%, I wasn't in this survey, nor was Val, but 98% or 49 out of the 50 people that we did interview would love to meet, and uh, whether it was patient to donor, donor to patient. I mean, I have to say, if you're a recipient, you would honestly say you don't want to meet the person whose life... Who saved my life. Yes. Uh, You've no yes. interest in saying thank you to that person? Well, um... No, no, no. I would say I would say thank you every day, and I would write letters, and I would. Uh, you don't want to actually meet them. Probably, uh, if you're putting me on the spot, probably no. Shocking. Are we still friends? Yeah, we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's so interesting. No, I uh, may. Uh, and uh, and your it, family? What if your family wanted to meet them, but you didn't want to meet them? <laughs> it's my life. It's my life. She's putting uh, you on the spot. Now. No, probably, and Looks it's like fair. I find it so so shocking that you. Or not you, but there are people that... No, I'm, I'm a very, believe it or not, private individual. And I, when, when I give money to organizations, I do it in anonymity. It's not for my name. If I try to help out people, I, I really don't do it to get my face in the paper or anything of that nature. So in that regard, listen, I, I wish as well as anybody else. And I, I certainly... W would I go through if I was called as a donor? 100%, no questions asked. Yeah. I mean, I'd also imagine it's de part kind, maybe devastating for the donor, say, that you gave this great piece of yourself and you want to meet your recipient and the recipient doesn't want to meet no you. Thank you. Yeah. I no, mean, no. And, and I've to been each there. their own, but. No, no, no. You want to know something? I, I'm respectful both sides. If you're asking me an honest question, I'm not going to lie because I'm on the radio here. <laughs> it's, it's something that I, I do like to be kept in, in anonymity. But in my heart, I, I could honestly say if I was in that situation and I am in the registry, never been called, in a, in a second I would help somebody out. And, you know, I would want to correspond anonymously, but probably for meeting, it's not, uh, it's not for me, it's not who I am. It, any nonprofit charity, whether it's uh, money, because obviously time they're going to see me, I generally write a, an anonymous check or send cash. So... If it was your kids, God forbid, you wouldn't want to meet the person that saved your kids? Uh, yes. You're asking me, though. Yeah. <laughs> I like my kids. I, I, like, <laughs> I like my kids. I, 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 like my, I love my kids. There's nothing that I wouldn't do for my children. Are we still friends? Yeah, we're not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hasn't uh, changed. Okay. Um, okay, so that's it's why great. opinions are, uh, that's what, what it is. You want to know something? It's just, uh, it's... It's just who I am. Uh, Valerie, why you? Why not you? Um, I believe kind of, you know, in the same parameter of, you know, you and just enjoying that gift and, um, you know, just the experience I think would be a lot purer, like you said. Yeah, there, it's just uh, some things uh, I, I've never seen, but I'll always have an affinity for. So in, in that regard, it's the same thing. Number three, that, that was about the most um, banter that we had uh, all season. So that was good. Great radio. Uh, general public is not uh, informed enough about blood cancer. So that means that we still have a job to do. I think uh, if there are other cancers or something that you're not afflicted with, generally you haven't been... Uh, you know, acclimated to it or introduced to it. And again, that gives us all the more fodder to get out, educate people and solve this epidemic because it's something that I believe can be at least arrested if we get more people involved. So hopefully we could uh, fulfill Arlene's legacy. And I, I think that's uh, that N another point. Have great ideas uh, uh, up and down and coming up. We have a creative team that tries to attract all different types of demographics. But one constant stable is that we need money to help test kits. The more kits we test, the more lives we'll save. And our ability to attract willing, uh, ready, willing, and able donors outpaces, unfortunately, our ability to fund all these potential life-saving kits and with that being said, I'm not shy. If anybody is interested in contributing, 
please call Anita at 1-800-9-MARROW. If anybody today wants to weigh in on what we're talking about on this panel, it's one 565 1470 But again, if you want to pay it forward, please call Anita at 1-800-9-MARROW. Uh, Fred, could you talk uh, enough about uh, the fact that we need money to test all the kits on, uh, that we need to save more lives? Um, yeah, I, I, I think that, um, you know, we do a great job um, as a as a whole to try and get people to not only donate their time as volunteers but also donate their bone marrow but uh, there is a a need other than uh, bone marrow and also volunteers we, we do need uh, financial stability and also you know these kits do cost um, a certain price and we would like to test all the kits that we can and we are help we are asking everyone to pitch in even if it's a dollar you know, we were talked about a little bit earlier. You know, if you were to give up ten dollars a month, it's thirty-three cents a day. Um, you know, that in the grand scheme of things isn't very large. Um, so you're giving up one cup of coffee, or and there's people out there that drink two to three cups of coffee a day. Um, the but you know, if you give up one thing a day to try and make a difference, I think um, as a whole we can make a, a big difference. No, Fred, that that was very very well put. We we need your help. That's why we do it. Um, Another thing that I learned this year, it goes back to something that Marty recently said. Blood cancer affects not only the patient, but the whole family. And I, I witnessed recently, and it's, uh, it's very, very unfortunate, but a, 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 um, a family member, a parent, fainted uh, with all the stress that his child was going through trying to find a match. And, you know, children in the same vein petrified that if their parent is, is fighting blood cancer, that they're going to grow up without a parent. And it's when, when gift of life finds a match, it's not only saving the patient's life, but it's only it's not only saving the patient's life, but it's also saving the family's life. Uh, Marty, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> I completely agree with that. Oh. Oh, bless you. Fred. <laughs> Sorry about um, that. I mean, the whole... When somebody in your family is ill, whether it be with a blood cancer or any other sort of health issue, the whole family is involved in it. And it's, you know, the whole family is fighting for that person. So it, it really is, you know, you're not just saving that person. You're, by being a donor, you save the entire family. And I think that holds true and is very in the forefront when we do these types of events where donors and recipients meet one another because you get to see the entire family that comes with the recipient um, and all the people that have been so touched by the donor's selfless act. And going back to contributions, I always say, I mean, sometimes a lot of people just don't think about it. I mean, if you're a donor on the registry and you're listening, did you pay for your kit? Chances are probably not. So somebody paid for your kit to be in the registry and it's just not something that people think about because they feel and they are doing such a good thing by being a volunteer donor. But at the same time, the only way that they can be a volunteer donor is if people contribute money. So, you know, it's a, it's hard because we're so thankful for people doing this selfless act, yet at the same time, we have to ask them for more, 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 more. But yeah, and, and you want to know something? I'll, I'll go on record. In a sense, if we could find a match anytime, anywhere for anyone, I wouldn't mind finding another job because we've done something great. So help us look for another job. Help us eradicate this by contributing. We could test more kits and hopefully, you know, solve the, the problem that for the pe every single person that's in need, it's easy for no enough for the four of us to find new jobs. Uh, Help us eradicate. Help us eradicate this disease. Again, if you're interested, 1-800-9-MARROW. And, and point number six, and I, I might have said this ad nauseum this year, health and happiness is a true gift of life. And un unfortunately, I think that people recalibrate only when s something of, of circumstance really... Uh, goes into the equilibrium of somebody's life but if you're healthy and happy everything else generally is secondary valerie i agree greg 
you said that beautifully in few words. <laughs> but but you, you did. You said that it, it beautifully in in a few words. So, uh, you know what? I can't even. Uh, I don't even want to expand <laughs> you, on that. You can't disagree. <laughs> no, you, you, you can't disagree. And I love the fact that you agree. So, um, uh, point number seven: the stupid nonsense that people get mad at. W working working in a, in a registry where we're trying to solve cancer and just the nonsensical stuff that people, whether it be traffic, whether it be, uh, you know, waiting at a diner, I'm guilty today before lunch when it took a, them about like 15 minutes to get to our table. <laughs> and the grand scheme of things, it's just really not that important. Frederick. Yeah, I, um, I'm one of those people that I'm very patient and um, it takes a lot to get under my skin, but as you mentioned, uh, you know, some things that do get people upset in the workplace, you know, uh, you have to understand that things happen every day and there are bigger problems out there. And I, that's what I think of, you know, when, you know, if for a, a small example, if I don't have a pencil, uh, it's not the end of the world. I'm going to go find a pen or I'll go and ask somebody for a pencil. So it's things like that that get under people's skin and there are bigger problems out there. So to the people that don't have patience, I guess, um, just learn some or <laughs> it's something that you can you can work on every day. I, I, I agree. And, and why why this topic is interesting to me, I, I worked in a lot of, uh, in, in a few industries, I don't want to say a lot, but this industry definitely crystallized my life more than any other. W when you see what we're trying to accomplish, you can see that a lot of stuff that gets people riled up is insignificant. So I've been working on uh, my patients in the same vein as you. What about you, Val? Well, Greg, like you, you know, you're mentioning everything has a solution, but death does not have a solution. Um, and that's very good. By far in this room, I know that I'm the least patient one. Um, I know today waiting at that <laughs> restaurant, um, we told the, I told the waiter that I had a flight to catch just because I was so impatient about uh. ordering or, you know, getting my drink. And I, I kept looking. They said, you know, that they were sorry that, you know, that they just had gotten filled up. And there were about three tables in the entire restaurant. So I was... I'm glad I was sitting on the inside of the booth because I would have probably, you know, gone out and found the manager. But Freddie and Freddie kept me trapped inside the booth. So it's a good thing that the two most patient people on this planet were with me. <laughs> and uh, for I like to be uh, patient also because I know that there there are bigger things in the world. And one of the other things that I've learned in life is try not to piss off people that are cooking your food. Yes, I worked in that industry. Do not mess with people that touch your food. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if, if that's going to be the byproduct of you being patient, then uh, it was a learned lesson today. So, Marty, let me throw this one to you, and this is from speaking to a lot of people. Take time to assess and recalibrate about priorities. Is there being that, hopefully knock on wood, and this is the case for the next hundred years that we're physically and, and mentally able to do things that we wanted to, uh, that we wanted to do, uh, what's something that is on your wish list? Mm. More traveling. Can I throw that out there? Is that okay? It's up to Are you. Are you looking for something more, something a little deeper? <laughs> no, no, no. It's not, uh, that, that's kind of deep. Where do you want to travel to? You know, anywhere. I'll go. Where you doing? Just more it's of it. Been, you know, just more of, yeah, you know. Vacations have been limited with small children, which is fine. I'll babysit. Because your kids are cute. <laughs> you wouldn't know they something. Uh, having two that are a little bit older than you, they, they still stay limited for the uh, the next 10 years. So. I'm sure. You know, I'd, I'd like to get out more. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> With that, we have a few more things that are, that are just as important that we want to talk about, but we want to get our sponsors their due. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll talk about uh, what else we've learned this year. So... Stay tuned, we're going to be back in two minutes. Are you in the market for a health plan? If so, please visit my good friend Gary at Health Plans Unlimited. No plan is too big or too small. Gary will customize a plan that's affordable and comprehensive just for you. 
If you're interested, please visit Gary Goldman, the best in the biz, at www.healthplansunlimited.com. Again, that's www.healthplansunlimited.com. Or you can call Gary Goldman directly on his personal line at 954-303-6676. Again, that's 954 954- 303-6676 and tell him that Greg sent you directly from the gift of life. Health Plans Unlimited. We have the health plan for you. Throwitbetter.com. Do you need help with your bowling game? Are you taking the right five-step approach? If you want to become a competitive bowler, even a recreational bowler that's considering joining a league or a league bowler that is considering joining a tournament, you need to see Vince. He's going to show you how to throw it better. He'll get you the right equipment. He'll show you the right approach. And as a certified coach, he'll put you in the best position to succeed. If you're interested, please contact Vince at throwitbetter at gmail.com and tell him that Greg sent you. Again, that's throwitbetter at gmail.com or call Vince at 954 541 54 one, four. We want to extend a special thanks to our friends at the Boca West Foundation for all the wonderful work they do for Gift of Life and for all the meaningful service they give to the Boca Raton community. For over three years, the Boca West Foundation has generously supported local charities in the Boca Raton area. The Boca West Foundation, it's all about the kids. Welcome back to the Gift of Life with Greg the show that talks about giving and receiving. If you'd like to call into our show, we'd love to hear from you. Please call 888-565-1470. Again, that's 888-565-1470. And now, back to our show. Welcome back to the Gift of Life with Greg and Marty. It is June the 9th, 2015. Marty always gets me to laugh during these uh, commercial breaks, and you try to time it where it's like four seconds before we go on live. So uh, I love you for that anyway. So, so we were talking about before the break what we learned this year, and going a little off the grid, and as most of you know, I'm a fanatic Jet fan, long-suffering Rex Ryan, I found out, uh, probably knew this a couple of years ago, but is not meant to be a head coach, but he's more of a defensive coordinator. Ken on the other side of the glass is agreeing with me. Uh, Fred, what do you think about that being a fellow Jet fan? I'm just glad he's no longer with the Jets and he's in our division still. And uh, I don't, I, I agree with you with um, he's not head coach material. So I'm glad we're going against him now. And you want to know something? We have another Jet fan in the room, my friend Marty, to my right, which I'll move the mic out of uh, out of her way. Are you happy that we got Bowles and Rex is out of town, or were you a Rex fan? No, I think Rex had to go. Sanchez had to go. Rex is not a head coach. Sanchez is not a lead quarterback. I think those are just mistakes made by the Jets. Two of many mistakes made by the Jets. The one, the one thing that I am going to miss, I have to admit, is the Rex uh, press conferences. Man, Jeannie was stone-lipped, and, and this guy is is very quiet. There, there was an interesting event. They had a, a charity softball game for first responders in the Bronx. I believe it was at Yankee Stadium. And there was a bunch of reporters around Rex and, and Bowles. The, the, uh, his successor, the new Jets coach, was off in a corner. And I think that that's uh, a sign of things to come. We're not going to have the brash and maybe not to make the back uh, pages of the post, but maybe win more games. Right. Let's just win. We don't need to. We'll, we'll let the plane do all the talking. Yes. I am going to miss uh, I am going to Rex uh, 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 press conferences, but I'm not going to hopefully miss the four wins a year or the eight wins a year. We, we wait uh, 16 weeks. So we wait 34 to get 16 games. So. Uh, hopefully the Jets are on to uh, bigger and brighter things. Uh, as an avid reader, uh, I read Nacha's Burning by Craig Isles, and I recommend everybody to devote two to three weeks to read this book. It's about a thousand pages, and you'll see how far we progressed as human beings from 50 years ago, where people of different ethnicities had a drink from different water fountains, where people of different ethnicities 
were segregated in schools where people of different ethnicities were not able to go to the same restaurants unless they went to uh, different doors. It actually brought tears to my eyes reading this book. And the beauty, again, I think, uh, not I think, I know about Gift of Life is that we want to help anyone, anytime, anywhere. But if somebody needs a good summer yarn, uh, give that uh, book a read. The, the, the sequel in the trilogy just came out, which is called The Bone Tree. And I, I definitely recommend reading it in order. So, again, good reading for the summer months. Uh, love to read. I turn off the TV this time of year. When football comes on, that, that's when the TV comes back. And uh, the, the only show that's probably worth watching now is Power. It's on stars. It's about a nightclub. So, uh, <laughs> but, but aside from nice that, little I know, plug I in there. <laughs> just, just a plug in there. They, uh, they contributed to Gift of Life. Um, point number 13. I'm one of the few people that doesn't like the Internet, doesn't like social media. I, I agree it's more efficient, but I truly like talking to people walking through bookstores and actually seeing people talk at each other at lunch as uh, opposed to constantly checking their smartphones. You do love your new gift though. Got to show everybody your gift from the boys. Yes, I got this for <laughs> Father's Day, uh, an early Father's Day for my sons that are away for the summer. So Greg is showing it to the camera that people listening are watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, Greg is basically wearing a watch on his arm. Yes. That is actually a phone. <laughs> it's not he, oh, not wa oh, a phone on his arm. Not He's been watch. talking into oh. it all day. It is. It, it, it's a phone on a watch, but... It's a phone it, on a watch on his arm. A <laughs> phone on a watch on his arm. Say that, say that ten times. But it, the, the one thing with social media, and, and we utilize it for a lot of positive things, I, I like talking to people face-to-face. -face. Uh, I used to love going shopping for CDs. Now you buy everything electronically. I, I love going to bookstores, and I still do for the few that are around instead of purchasing it on a Kindle. Marty, what do you think? I'm a Kindle user, though. <laughs> don't don't bash the Kindle users. I'm going to bash the Kindle. <laughs> I love feeling the book. I mean, books are nice. Kindles <laughs> are nice. I still subscribe to magazines. Who does that anymore? I do. Yeah, you get them. You can get magazine subscriptions for like $5 because <laughs> nobody subscribes to them. Uh, it just, uh, I, I don't have a Facebook account. I don't have a Twitter account. I just really like talking to people. Though a magazine subscription is something I could give up to pay it forward. There you go. Nice. That that's a good ten dollars. It's even less than less than that. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe give up a couple of magazines. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole subscription is ten dollars for the year. For the year. Yeah. yeah. So no, it, it, pay it, it forward right there. It's interesting. I, I um, t talking about that. What what we did uh, before, Morty. Uh, I keep in in. I like to be anonymous. Uh, generally, I, I eat alone, um, but it gives me a lot of time. I, I look at people just almost uh, like a sociological experiment, like an ethnographer. And when people are eating, that's how they look at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and right, right, rightfully so. But everybody in the room was thinking. It, it, no, no, no. But everybody in the room is. Look, no, you want to know something? I take that back. They're not looking at me. They're looking at their phones. <laughs> they're not looking no, at No, we're pretty sure they're like <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're Snapchatting their friends <laughs> about you watching them, watching you. By Fair yourself. Enough. All alone. <laughs> All alone. <laughs> but I'm alone, not lonely. I do agree with you, though, um, about Thank the bookstores. You. <laughs> Thank you. I would love to be taken to, you know, a Barnes & Noble's for a first date and actually talking versus the going to a movie where you don't really talk but it's considered a date so but what about in uh when, when we go out to lunch it's generally you know the phones are up blocking our faces and even in, in general restaurants it's something that i've noticed more and more and kids are starting to get phones younger and younger they said six what? the average kid gets their phone at age six i heard on the news there's there's this thing that it's a trend it's called phone stacking when you're out with your friends, you everyone puts their phone on top of one another, and they put it towards the end of the table, and no one's allowed to touch the phone, and they're all they all vibrate up and down until the actual meal is over. So it's kind of we're kind of going back to the traditional way of you know not looking at your phones, uh, you know, as a. I've, I've heard that, and um, actually, it was done once with a couple of friends of mine, like four friends, and whoever touched their phone had to pick up the tab. That's the way that and it should be. It was yeah. me. I. 
I, d- I didn't last more than two seconds. Um, I, I needed to know who texted me. I, you want to know something? That's something this year, and uh, I, I didn't really focus on it. It's probably n- not new to anybody, but t- take time to, to smell the roses. Have, when you have a cup of coffee, really enjoy it. It's not Everything doesn't have to be in a rush, which leads me into the last point, and uh, Ken on the other side of the glass gave us our two-minute warning. And when you think about it, how many things are really that serious? And one of my favorite conversations this year took place with a gentleman in in Tennessee who was working on a a real estate deal that I really thought had to be done yesterday, having maybe somewhat of a mentality that, you know, everything has to be done in this minute. So I said, you know, what happens if we don't close today? And he took a deep breath, very, very composed, and he said, you know what, we'll close tomorrow and there is a lot of beauty in that simplicity and it goes back to the first point how many things are really that important in life where they self-imposed things that really don't make a difference so with all that being said there was a lot of tears and a lot of joy this year certainly working for gift of life we have a lot of work to do I can't thank you three enough for for spending time every week trying to help save people's lives. We have a lot of work to do, and hopefully one day we can say say that we really made a difference. With that being said, we're out of time, so we'll be back for our final show of the season, same time, same place next week. Everybody go out there, have a great week. God bless, and we'll let you know how the gala is. We'll be back soon. Thanks for tuning in to The Gift of Life with Greg. I wanted to personally say thank you to everyone who participated in today's show. And I also wanted to let you know if that you're interested in what we do here at The Gift of Life, please call 1-800-9-MARROW. That's 1-800-9-MARROW. Or you can visit our website at www.giftoflife.org. Again, that's www.giftoflife.org. Even though we're wrapping up our show today, remember, you must always unwrap The Gift of Life. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not